I am back. I have pressed record on my microphone today and my bangs look like they want to eat my eyes. I hope you're all doing well. And today I wanted to respectfully, platonically, Sim 4 and Aries Man, I think a lot of you already know and love, named Julian Solomita. Because I think that there's been an overload of content about Jenna Marble since she left the internet and about the void that she has left in all of our hearts. But I feel like there is just not enough independent content looking at the platform that Julian has created. I just wanted to delve into the content and just his own his own impact on the platform. So for those of you who have been living under the YouTube proverbial rock, Julian Solomita is the longtime partner and fiance of Jenna Marbles who by the time that they were dating had already amassed a massive YouTube platform. In a now deleted video, Julian first made his appearance on Jenna's channel in the How to Mildly Annoy Your Dogs 2, where the video mostly featured Jenna, but you could hear Julian snickering in the background and had a brief face reveal, Kermit towards the end, and some true quality content. And for those of you who weren't around in 2013 or weren't watching Jenna's content at the time, it was actually pretty controversial that Julian was even making an appearance. Um, believe it or not, the Dink fam was not always so receptive to him, which is just hard to think about considering how like kind and accepting uh, the fan base is now and how like little tolerance they would have for the, the comments that were made back in the day. But really, ever since the beginning, I think the fan base that Jenna Marbles had amassed had always been very protective of her, which I suppose is the more kind way to forgive the, the weird parasocial relationship we all had with her at the time. Because many in her fan base were not over her previous relationship and were not too happy that to see Jenna moving on with a different person, even if he wasn't named or really even featured in the videos. So Julian um, largely stayed in the background behind the scenes in Jenna's content around 2013. But it would be a while before you start seeing him appear in thumbnails and become a regular feature of her content. Now, although Julian did not start out as a content creator before meeting Jenna, he had his own channel that he started in 2012. And a lot of his earlier videos have now been deleted, but he originally started doing weightlifting content. Homeboy was swole, respectfully, and could pick things up and put them down again. And people were very impressed by that. So I'm told. The first video I could find on his channel as of today was just him um, very out of breath explaining that he was on a bike. It's two minutes long. He's on a bike. All right, so I'm Julian, I'm on my bike. Uh, for a while I've been wanting to give this vlog thing a try. I feel like I have a lot to say. Um, look at the hill I just went down. And I love that for him. So his early content was pretty sporadic. It would just be vlogs from his weightlifting competitions, really short little tidbits, um, some random songs that he had recorded. It wasn't around until like 2015 to where Julian really became his own like bona fide creator, really committed to making regular YouTube content. I also really love that those who didn't follow Jenna on other platforms or maybe just weren't in the loop with um, what was going on in her personal life, Julian was slowly introduced as her brother in How to Mildly Annoy Other People, and then as her dad, Billy Ray Silas, in a sketch in which she played Miley Cyrus. So he not only overcame the friend zone, he overcame the Billy Ray zone. Jenna also introduced Julian as her friend in the 2013 photo booth challenge, and I just love that they've been besties this whole time. It's um, a real testament to their friendship. Looking back at this like really old content, I wish I could say that Julian seemed really shy or uncomfortable or like you wouldn't even recognize him, but honestly, he's just like the same Aries King I've always seen. Even though I'm sure he did actually feel pretty awkward or nervous, like his personality still very much shined through in this content. And you could tell that he was a kind, funny person and him and Jenna just really worked well with each other and really had a lot of on-screen chemistry. And of course, no off-screen chemistry because they were only platonic friends. We're gonna drop some beats. In 2014, Julian started moving into vlog content. I would say one of the first main vlogs of his channel was when he adopted Miss Leech, who is so, so cute, little nugget. She really grew from a little chicken nugget to a whole rotisserie chicken. She's a peach. She's definitely a peach. Such a peach. 
And in between vlogs, he would still be doing sort of random, typical 2014 YouTube things, like him and Jenna did the Not My Arms challenge. So this isn't just a Jenna and Julian thing, this is more so just 2014 generally. We really used to just say like, fuck every other word, didn't we? Like, I remember when the adpocalypse occurred on YouTube and they were talking about how now you couldn't swear, especially in like the first 20 seconds of your video. And I'm like, I won't let these, this liberal media take away my F words. Oh, it was an innocent time on the platform, wasn't it? When that was all we had to worry about. Also in 2014, Jenna and Julian were doing you streams? I don't know. From what I could tell, they were doing some sort of like pre-Twitch live streaming where you couldn't really record live streams and have a backlog of content. And so they started the Jenna and Julian podcast in 2014. And can I just say, watching the first podcast episode, it is incredibly jarring not to see them do the ding, 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 ding. Like, what even is this? Originally, the podcast was just a way to record their streams. They would drink, hang out, um, talk about random topics. And eventually the podcast became its whole independent thing. It got its own set. They would regularly have guests. They started doing ding, 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 which was the most important part. And personally, I became a regular listener um, sometime in 2018 and have since re-listened to many of the episodes fondly. Also, I went back and wanted to see when they started doing the ding, 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 ding. And if you look between like episode 56 and 60, you can see like slow evolution. Jenna realizing that she can do dink 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 dink. It's just so fascinating to see like legendary content being created and the person not even knowing it. I think by 2014 um, the tides have sort of started to turn um, as far as Julian's public perception. I think people had gotten over um, their previous hesitations with him but I think the the podcast was really a turning point. Julian is a natural podcaster. He, he always has something to say about any particular topic. And between 2013 and 2015, even when Julian wasn't directly in any of Jenna's videos, you really started to see a big shift in her creative vision. And I think that in part, this was just because of the evolving standards of the time. And of course, Jenna's own like growth. But also I think Julian's broadcasting perspective really added to the quality of her videos. Before her content was just filmed on her Mac or on a, a single tripod and um, it would just be static shots where you could clearly tell that she was just filming by herself. But as Julian came in, not only was he holding the camera and moving around with her, um, but she started to employ more creative ideas, more, more editing, more interesting shots. And of course, I don't know how much of this was Jenna and how much of this was Julian's influence, um, but I think you can see from Julian's own content that he's always had an artistic vision, especially with cinematography. And I'm sure that that also influenced Jenna's growth as well. By 2015, we were moving into the classic vlog era of Julian. This was the height of everyday bro, where daily vlog content was kind of the norm for the platform. And Julian thrived in this. One of his classic vlogs from this era is when he he removes his man bun, which rests in peace to a legend, honestly. He skateboards down to his barber, donates his hair. Towards the end of 2015 into 2016, he was all in on content. He had a drone, he was making short films, he was taking more artistic liberties with his vlogs. One of my favorite vlogs he made from this classic era was in 2017. He uploaded a, just a two minute video called Average, where he talked through just an average day for himself. All right, so today is a pretty average day. And the term average day, while it may be routine and uneventful, if you look a little deeper, you get to kind of see the intricate parts of what makes today average. Like for instance, I started my day off rolling around for an hour in jujitsu, getting better and exhausted, but mostly exhausted. Meanwhile, Peach was chewing on a treat like it was the last one she'll ever find, while also the first one she's ever found. Wow, Kermit seems to... I... I not really care. Just across from them on the other side of the couch, you got Marble, who's just living his life and thinking his thoughts. What those are, we will probably never ever know. I can't even explain why this content particularly resonated with me. Honestly, Julian can narrate anything and, and I will listen to it. And I suppose what I like is that you could see that he had something to say. And even though I miss this vlog content, I can definitely see why he's steered away from it now. One, because his partner is explicitly offline and so it can be weird to vlog your day when you have to spend a large portion of your of your life, but two, um, it's draining on him as well. The reason why we don't see vlog content the way we used to before is that a lot of these people burnt out from putting on sort of a persona of showing their everyday life. Because even though vlog content is meant to show your everyday, I think a lot of creators felt forced to put on a sort of persona for their platform. And like a lot of people, YouTubers fall into routine, so expecting an exciting vlog 
um, on an almost daily basis really just lends itself to creative burnout. So as the vlog trends of 2016 began to die out, Julian jumped into um, one of his most iconic series to date. Jay and Jay's Kitchen was sort of the precursor. Jenna and Julian would cook different meals, sometimes they would have mukbangs afterwards, talking about the cooking, but also just talking about whatever. You know, my boyfriend in high school, you said- What the fuck, dog? <laughs> <laughs> and as someone who is vegan and comes from a long line of hot girls with stomach issues, I have a lot of people who are gluten-free in my life, so finding someone who made vegan and gluten-free meals that wasn't a salad, um, made me very happy and was personally how I got back into sort of the Jenna and Julian content realm. So J and J's kitchen shortly became Julian's kitchen. Um, and then we get the video Aries in a kitchen, but I think the first true Aries kitchen video, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is making a giant cookie because that is one, the most Aries thing he could possibly do. Two, it is cooked in, it is made in peak Aries season. And three, this is when we get uh, the camera setup that we're, we're used to today, when it comes to Aries Kitchen at least. And what I would give for my videos, for my life, to just look the way that Julian's footage looks in these videos. Like something about the way he color grades and always just has the background perfectly blurred without it looking like obnoxious or looking like overproduced. It just feels like a bowl of, of like warm soup. What? Good soup. I don't know, I'm trying to say that like something about like the way he films his content just feels like so comforting, so nostalgic almost, but it wasn't even that long ago, so I don't know if I can be nostalgic for it. I like, I know I can go out and buy his cameras and like use the software he uses, but I just like don't think I could replicate it um, with my technological ability and just not being Julian, unfortunately. So from then on, his content would mostly be cooking videos. But his channel also became the spot to see how the dogs were celebrating their birthdays from year to year, or to see what vet emergency Kermit had gotten himself into. So? Another trip to the vet with Kermit. But through the summer of 2020, Julian's content would see a massive change. I really have the urge to say, um, I was too young to remember when 9-11 happened, but I remember when Jenna Marbles left YouTube. And we're, and we're not gonna say that. I mean, I did just say that, but we're gonna pretend I didn't make that comparison or better yet, I edited it out because I have the power to do that, but um, I won't. Now, like I said at the beginning, this video is not about Jenna and her decision ultimately to leave the internet, but it would be impossible to tell Julian's story without telling at least part of Jenna's story. Um, they had been making content as a team for years. They had ran a podcast together for six years. They regularly streamed on Twitch multiple times a week. Julian filmed and was featured in most of Jenna's, Jenna's content, and Jenna would often appear in his content as well. So even though Julian had made plenty of solo content, their brand was so intimately tied together at the time. And even though Julian was committed to being online, this certainly raised concern for the fan base. I think we all remember when Michael Scott left the office and the show just dragged on for two seasons, almost ruining its legacy afterwards. Or when Steve suddenly went off to college and we were just supposed to have this new best friend, Joe. Of course, these are fictional characters and not real people, but Julian still was faced with the problem of finding his own voice and his own brand outside of Jenna and navigating the space without her, um, at least publicly. And I'm happy to report that unlike Matt LeBlanc, he didn't just stay for a subpar and slightly homophobic spinoff. In fact, he's continued to make great content over the time that she's been gone, and I think it goes thoroughly underappreciated. Julian retired Aries Kitchen in October of 2021, and his YouTube channel has not been particularly active. He'll occasionally plus us with very much needed dog updates, but he's talked about not feeling particularly inspired to make YouTube content or not having ideas he feels is worthy enough for his platform. But that doesn't mean that Julian's been gone. When Jenna left the internet, Julian and Jenna's joint Twitch account um, was sitting at roughly around 400,000 followers. Since then, he's gained another 200,000 followers and become a Twitch ambassador. His second channel, Julian too, has gained over 200,000 followers in the past couple of years. And this isn't just coasting off of Jenna's absence. Sure, there was a noticeable spike in viewership um, following her absence. And occasionally when he mentions Jenna and gives life updates, they'll be There'll be a flood of fans asking when Jenna's coming back or how she's doing or or hoping that he'll mention her again. But I would say by this point, that's a fairly small minority of Julian's fan base. A lot of people have grown to love him as his own independent creator as well. Watching him grow into his solo Twitch channel over the past few years has been really exciting. 
And he still manages to do a wide variety of content. On his Twitch channel, you can see him every week telling story times, doing meme reviews, playing games for hours and hours, sometimes by himself, sometimes with other Twitch streamers. And on average, he streams about 30 hours a week. It's only a fraction of his life. And there's a lot more of his day that uh, we, don't, we don't get to see. But 30 hours a week is a lot of time um, to be putting yourself up to public judgment. And over the past, over the past months, couple of months, you can see that this is really taking a toll on Julian's mental health as well. You can really see his his Capricorn placements coming through. He's, and he's made several videos talking about the sort of burnout that he struggles with um, and the need to take a couple of days off. But he rarely takes off more than one or two days before he's back to streaming and back to making content. And I hope going into the next year that Julian takes that needed time for himself and his mental health. I think it's very rare to find male creators who are... Um, TikTok would say written by a woman, which is just shorthand for being like respectful and not bound by toxic masculinity. Content that can often feel really inaccessible to the queer community with his humor, his creativity, and his creative vision. And I hope that he knows that I, for one, and many people in the in the community could just watch him talk and paint his nails, um, and that would be enough. My, I guess my advice for like getting back into it and feeling like it can be a positive outlet again, you know, I think. I think it's one of those things where you have to, I think you have to really try to separate the, uh, the, the outside world from your, your favorite thing to do, right? Or one of your favorite things to do, your hobby. So if you sort of put a line between your art and your activity and then the outside world's on the other side and on the other side is social media, uh, friends and family, um, thinking about past experiences, doing that same activity, really just try to focus in on, you know, just isolating it. It is, it is drawing, it is painting, it is sculpting, right? Turn on some of your favorite music, really just remind yourself over and over. This is, this is mine. This is for me. Like you're doing it for yourself. No one ever needs to see it. And think about the process of doing it as therapy, right? Like you have your music on, open up a window, get a nice breeze going, and just try to let try to let yourself go. Try to let yourself kind of just fall into it for a short amount of time. It doesn't need to be, you don't need to hold yourself accountable for like, oh, I got to really hit it hard every day and do this. If you're trying to fall back in love with, with art, take baby steps and really just focus on the relationship between you and the art not your art and the rest of the world because i feel like unfortunately like your scenario that you described it's so toxic to have other people jump in between you and your passions and make you despise each other like that's that is frustrating and i i totally i totally agree motivation can be super fucking tough sometimes man i mean even if it's like even if it's something that you know you like doing like Motivation is hard because because you're an ever-changing person and life always has variables and the weather t changes and it's just life is life is hard. So I I hope that you can uh, Sachi, I hope that you can find a way to kind of fall back in love with art. So I hope he takes his own advice and is kind to himself and I hope you all are too. I feel like videos gushing about a person just inevitably don't do as well as um, the videos where I'm critiquing someone. I feel like I didn't have as many um, good zingers or or groundbreaking things to say today, but I hope you enjoyed it. Sometimes it's good to just like appreciate the creators that you think are out there doing good things. Cause I don't know about you, but I tend to be a silent viewer most of the time. And um, maybe just like leave a comment, show your appreciation to Julian and to me, because I definitely need the ego boost. Um, even if Julian doesn't, I do. So anyways, I hope you liked this video. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I will be around making more content, whether you like it or not. Um, and I'll see y'all later.